Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's time to talk about This Week in Weather for 16-17 October. And in this particular edition of This Week in Weather, we'll be talking about a couple of interesting things. First, we want to go over why North Carolina and southeast Virginia flooding was so bad with Matthew. Um, obviously, we'll get a lot of rain, but the flooding there was really bad in some areas. And it's still going on, of course. Uh, we'll talk about what might or might not be happening on the East Coast, October 21 to the 22nd. Will the mild pattern last into November? And also what a weak La Nina means for the month of November, taking a look at that. So let's get started. And we'll begin by taking a look here at the overall jet stream pattern. Uh, these are from the Canadians, and this is a very nice uh, feature to look at. Um, and it's useful because uh, it gives us a nice hemisphere shot of the overall pattern. So uh, the blue line here, as you can see right here, this is the blue line. Um, that is clearly the uh, upper level jet stream, the polar jet. And we can follow the blue line. Let me call up a couple of different things here. See this feature here? That's an omega block. And I wanted to point that out. You can see it right here. There it is. And that's because if you notice that the, the feature goes like this and around, that forms a letter omega. So there's an upper low here, there's an upper low over here, and that forms a letter omega. So, uh, and we have another one across over Scandinavia as well. And in between, we've got an upper low in this area here. And of course, we've got one over here as well. So, uh, and what the, in, in, the, and then across the southern jet, uh, the subtropical jet across the Pacific, we have very strong, very compacted height lines. You can see the height lines here are very tight. So we have a lot of energy hitting the west coast. Uh, had that big storm here a, a couple of days ago in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies. More of that's coming up. And uh, what that does is if your trough is over here, as you can see, that means you have a ridge right here. And uh, since the uh, NAO and the other features are still positive at this point, uh, this ends up producing a southeast ridge and we end up getting look at the jet stream is going like this so we end up seeing a lot of warm air getting coming up from the southwestern states and that's going to happen over the next several days with this upcoming pattern this is the sea surface temperature map anomalies for uh, october 16th and again i want to point out here is you remember we talked about that uh, omega block in alaska the bering sea take a look how, how that is huh i mean that's pretty impressive yeah that's where your warm waters are and that's matching up very nicely. So, and of course, if that persists in the winter, that's going to be another complicating factor. All right, let's take a look at the rainfall amounts at the end of uh, August, as of September 1st. Now, I'm pointing this out so you can see that in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, it was all quite dry here across all of these areas. You can see very, very dry, and that is up to September 1st. But then things began to change, and that helped set up the flooding conditions. For instance, this we had a, a significant rain event here on September 3rd, as you can see. And if you look at the Carolinas, look at South Carolina. A lot of places had three or six inches of rain here. Also in Southeast Virginia, excuse me, in Southeast and North Carolina, you can see the rainfall amounts here. Look at this, and then over in here as well. Very impressive rainfall amounts. And that's but that's just the first wet system uh, that they started seeing um, uh, in early, early September. Then this is the overall jet stream pattern as of September 21st. It had an upper low over the southeastern states. And if we look at the rainfall so for September 20th, we can see widespread significant rain from New York City down to the Carolinas and all the state of Virginia. Not a surprise there. If we look at September 21st, the same sort of thing. And September 22nd, again, mostly North Carolina getting hit with the significant rains, upper South Carolina, southeast Virginia. And here's September 23rd. <laughs> really, if you want to know why, if anything has changed, nothing really has changed. These areas are still getting hit pretty good with moderate rains day after day after day. Not really heavy rains, but it's definitely dropping, making a hole in their drought here. Now, this is by September 29th. Uh, the week before Matthew came up, we had this big upper low, which came down from the Great Lakes, caused a lot of rain. And we're still there September 30th. And if you look at the rainfall amounts here, now, on the 28th, we had most of the rain was in this area. Some moderate rains in here, but most of it was there. Uh, and then when we go to September 29th, we can see that, um, well, very impressive rainfall. A huge rain amounts uh, here in this whole area, as you can see. And then in Shenandoah Valley as well. 
more up in this area, but this is what you want to look at here and here. All significant rains on September 29th. And if we look at the rainfall total as of September 29th, look what's happened. Look at the dramatic change here. This uh, whole area is now, um, I guess, yep, you can see it. And it's now 400% above normal, 300% above normal in some areas, 500% above normal in the past 30 days. So it was a huge change in the overall pattern. And if we look at the track of Matthew, you can see what happens here. Notice what it does. Originally, as you know, many of the forecast models, including my forecast, had Matthew doing this and turning out to, to the east when it got to Myrtle Beach latitude. But in fact, as you can see, it passed very close to Hatteras, and that put all the high winds into Virginia Beach, which was not supposed to happen. In any event, uh, that's that's let you know what happened with Matthew. Now let's take a look at this next event coming up here, uh, October 21st or 22nd. Originally, it looked like we were going to have a big upper low, as I posted on the Facebook page, forming at the base of the trough over the Mississippi River Delta area, and then the cold front coming through. But what's happened now is the models are changing the surround a bit. First, we're seeing this feature here off in the Bahamas, and I don't know if this is going to be a tropical feature or just a tropical low. We don't know that yet. It's not a very significant system there on the satellite pictures. I mean... We still have four days to watch it, but so far I'm not seeing any big mass of clouds there uh, near the Bahamas. And here you have the low right here, and you can see the cold fronts like this. So those are the two features. This is as of uh, October 20th. And if you look at the European model for the tropical uh, image here that they have, you can see the low here. Let me call my marker. You can see the low here as of um, the 19th, and then the, here it is on the on the. Uh, 21st, same sort of thing. So is that is this a tropical low? I don't know. Is it a, a regular low? I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, so a case can be made for either one. We'll have to play it by ear and see what happens here. All right, now let's look at the European. And, and again, we look at how it continues. It develops a very significant tropical system east of the Bahamas, as you can see right here. And then the other low this way. So the low that was in Kentucky goes in this direction. The front comes down here, and we have some sort of tropical low or a tropical storm, um, maybe a tropical depression. I don't know what it is. It could be any number of things, and this would be valid for the 21st. The problem is that with the two lows here and the low here, there's no rain in Virginia, and we'll see that in a second here. Yeah, that's why the European is doing that. Look at the rainfall. Okay, this rain here is associated with that low which was in uh, you know, Illinois going up in this direction. And then you have the tropical system here. So all this is dry. That's totally different from what the European was showing a couple of days ago when I talked about the potential for a significant uh, coastal storm of some type. And here is the uh, European ensemble. Same sort of thing. Big low there off the southeast coast. Is that a tropical system? Is it a regular low? Is it some sort of combination? We don't know. Here's the GFS ensembles at 18Z looking very close to what the... Uh, Sunday afternoon European was showing, so you can't fault the model for that. And then uh, moves off of Cape Cod again, good for New England. And here's the rainfall from the 18Z GFS. And notice again that uh, the, the big tropical out here is a lot of rain. This is the low that's in Kentucky and Missouri and travels in this direction. So these areas get rain, but very little falls in this whole area, if that's correct. So we'll have to wait and see. If you look further down the road at the jet stream pattern here at 144 hours, you can see the trough on the east coast, the ridge over the southeastern states. But then we see some more interesting stuff here. Now, this is 240 hours. And what's happening is you can see the trough right here over the west coast and also a new uh, piece of event. And you can see the lines are very tightly compact here. This is the Howling Pacific Jet. There's a big upper low in this direction. So it's, and there's a ridge here. So what's happening is the lines here are compacting, so it's very strong, fast flow in that direction. So the trough is on the east coast, I mean, excuse me, on the west coast, and we have a bit of a, a, a negative NAO developing here over Greenland. And what that does is that keeps the, the flow zonal and Pacific and fairly mild. There's no cold air coming in. And if we look at the 6 to 10 day, look at the temperature anomalies. Really warm for everybody uh, in the last, going into the last week of October, but especially warm over the south, south uh, western states. And if we look at 312 hours, which is the end of October, again, we can see not much change. We see very strong here. Um, uh, let me call it my marker. You can see it. Uh, here's the upper low right here and the very strong winds coming out of the Pacific. And we still have the negative NAO here. 
So uh, there's no reason to think that that's a particularly cold pattern because this negative NEO is connected to the upper low in this area. These two things are in a symbiotic relationship or teleconnect to each other. So that doesn't mean we're going to get cold in the east. This is one of those NEOs which is actually connected to the Bering Sea low. And this is uh, 360 hours. And again, the point here is that there's an upper low right here. And the NAO is connected to that over here. So it's not really affecting the U.S. It's mostly connected with this feature. And we can see the Howling Pacific Jet still coming in. Very impressive, no doubt about it. And if we look at 11 to 15 day, temperatures continue to run warm. And the European weeklies, it actually has to get in cold finally here a little bit after Election Day or thereabouts. And the European ensemble for the uh, for the uh, La Nina, notice here what it's showing. You can see that the, let me call it my market. Here's the zero line right here. So we're kind of at La Nina now. By the time we get to December or January, it's very, very weak or fading La Nina. So that's something to keep in mind for the forecast later on. Uh, if we look at November for uh, weak El Ni La Ninas, what do the pattern look like? Well, these are all the weak La Ninas that I could find that are good matches. And you can see it has a the jet stream pattern shows a uh, nice trough over the eastern U.S., the Great Lakes, of the Midwest. So that would indicate colder temperatures. And we can see that. We can see the cold air relative to normal right here and the warm air right there. And that makes sense. That matches the overall pattern. And the precipitation looks fairly dry here over the Midwest and the uh, Mississippi Valley. And of course, if you have a big trough on the East Coast in November, you're probably going to have a dry pattern over some portion of the Midwest. Well, that's this week in weather. I'm DT and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this broadcast. And we'll have some more and start doing audios pretty soon here as we go to late October and getting ready for the winter. This is DT. I'll catch you on the other side.